Have you heard the argument that bad words or bad language isn't that bad, that it doesn't matter? Maybe even your children have said that bad words don't really mean anything, so they ask, what's the big deal? And what can you do to teach them not to use bad language? In this episode, I'm going to give you the reasons bad words are bad. And if you watch to the end, you will have a step-by-step -step plan of exactly how to teach your children not to use them. Be sure to watch to the end because I'm also going to explain how to help you not only teach your child not to say bad words, but also to speak respectfully to their siblings. Coming right up. Hi, I'm Holly McLean, the Mommy Answer Lady. I'm a certified parent educator, mom of nine, and author of the book and online course, How to Train Your Child to Behave. On this channel, you will find new weekly step-by-step -step instructional content to help you become the most effective parent you can be, so please subscribe right now. I wanted to address this issue of using bad language because as time goes by, it's getting worse and worse in our society. A few years ago, you would never hear a person use foul language in public except on very rare occasions. You wouldn't go into a store and hear someone spouting off profanities while in a conversation. Now you can hardly help hearing it. Some of you may already realize this is a problem, but others may not really see it as an issue. Why is this a problem anyway? The reason it is a problem is because it is rude. Now, I know that isn't a good enough answer because then the question becomes, why is it rude? Here's why. Manners are all about making others feel comfortable and not intruding upon someone else's mind and body inappropriately. Rudeness is the opposite of that. Manners and rudeness are opposites. When someone uses foul language, what they are doing is intruding upon the mind of another person by placing vulgar thoughts in their mind without any invitation to do so. I mean, we can hardly help but hear it when someone else says it in our presence, right? And when we hear it, it is put in our mind whether we want it to be there or not. Now, let me give you an analogy that may make this point a little more clear. Think of the most foul word you can think of for a moment, and I'm sorry to ask you to do that, but just think of it for just a moment. What's the meaning of that word? Now, instead of thinking of that word, think of a picture of the meaning of the word. I'm not talking about the spelling of it on a piece of paper, but a picture of the actual thing or act it is describing. Now, imagine that someone has that picture and they're holding it in their hand, and they just randomly hold it up in front of you as they're in a conversation with you. They flash that picture in front of you without any provocation or invitation to do so. Now, you're not a blind person, so you can't help but see it. Wouldn't that be inappropriate? Wouldn't that be rude? And if your child was standing right there, wouldn't you want to cover their eyes? Yes, of course you would, and yes, it is rude. It is rude because it is intruding upon your mind and the mind of your child as well. Many of the words that are considered inappropriate are words degrading the act of sex or human waste, and some are degrading for other reasons. Now think about being in a conversation with someone and all of a sudden a word degrading sex or speaking about human excrement is placed in the conversation. Can that be considered rude? Yes. Now, I think some of you that are watching knew there was something wrong with bad language, but weren't sure what. You may now have a clearer understanding in your mind about why bad language is bad. Here's a few things you can do to teach your children not to use bad words. This list can also be used to help curb the problems with siblings arguing as well. So this is a two for one lesson here. Number one, have a conversation. Sit down with your child and explain the reason why bad words are bad, as I have just explained it here. Also tell them that words mean things, and when words come out of their mouth, they cannot be put back in. Number two, give them guidelines for their own speech. Each word they speak is putting a thought into the mind of the listener, including their siblings. In order not to be rude, the words they use should be at least one of four things. Helpful, informative, uplifting, or encouraging. If they are not in at least one of these categories, they should not be said at all. Remember those four things, helpful, informative, uplifting, encouraging. You'll need to keep those in mind for what's coming up. 
Number three, give them a memory verse. One thing I am so glad I did when I was bringing up my children was teach them this short scripture. Now, whether you're a Christian or not, I suggest you consider teaching it to your children. It goes like this. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. I remember even my little three-year-olds could say this verse, and it was so cute hearing them use these big words. Believe me, this verse is a great one to help children learn to speak appropriately. And if you put it on their parent recording, they can learn it without much prompting and reminding from you. If you don't know what a parent recording is, see the video on this channel about no fuss bedtime for kids and get it or get a copy of my book, How to Train Your Child to Behave. Number four, ask them questions when they speak inappropriately. If you hear a child speak a bad word or even a mean or unkind word to their siblings, you can ask them these four questions right in a row in the same order every time and have them answer each one as you ask it. Was this helpful? Was it informative? Was it uplifting? Was it encouraging? Once they answer no to all of these questions, remind them that they should not have said it at all. Number five, have them say the memory verse back to you. After these questions, have them repeat the memory verse from Ephesians I just told you about. We didn't have that language in our home at all, but I used this method to talk to my own children if I would hear them speaking unkindly to each other, arguing or saying anything else that was inappropriate. It worked well, and I believe most of them could still repeat this verse as adults. Number six, have them write an essay. If you do still have a problem with your child speaking inappropriately, another great way to help them think through their own behavior is to have them write an essay as to why this kind of language isn't acceptable. Tell them to write it well and give them requirements per their age for the length and other details you expect to be included in it. Then keep the essay and each time it happens, have them read the essay back to you aloud. Believe me, with all of this, if it is done consistently, it is unlikely that they will get this far. But if they do, having to read the essay aloud to you each time will definitely stop the behavior. Has this video given you some helpful parenting advice? If so, please remember to subscribe to this channel and check out my book, How to Train Your Child to Behave. There's a link below or you can find me at mommyanswerlady.com. Parents, you can do this. I hope to see you here next week.